kidney stones, if you are scared of them, want to prevent them, have dealt with the pain of them in the past or are right now, I got a double-sided whiteboard here to break all things down. We're going to start with the prevention side so you never go down the same path as an uncle or as your parent or of the same in the past that you've had. And I'm going to show you in the backside, if you are dealing with them right now, how do we actually get rid of these without medications, without zapping them? What's your best options naturally to deal with it? Welcome to the doc's office. I'm Dr. Living Good. Let's dive right in. Kidney stones, four types, all right? Here's the most common, calcium oxalate, calcium oxalate or calcium phosphates. These are the most common when calcium combines with the oxalates that your body actually produces. And yes, you can eat things that can enhance oxalates, but a lot of things enhance oxalates in your body. And they're not necessarily big negative things. It's just calcium gets taken up. And if there's too much of it that settles in the kidneys, you get that. I'm gonna break that down a little bit more and how you can decrease it. Some people really freak out about oxalates, but a lot of really nutritious food like spinach contains oxalates. It's the body's ability to deal with the oxalates that is broken down. I'm gonna show you how to enhance your body's ability to do that. Number two is uric acid. If you're eating a lot of sugars, potentially a lot of toxic meat, I always wanna make sure we don't demonize one food because man has made a lot of really good foods bad. And so processed meats, Meats that you're buying in a package, think hot dog, think sausage, those can really lead to this. A lot of fructose and a lot of carbohydrates will really increase the uric acid in your body. Those can settle in the kidney, let alone your foot called gout, and create problems. Struvites, these are going to be your UTI stones. So if you're getting a lot of bladder infections or UTIs, you're at big risk of having these. And those are hard to get out and they can sit deep in those kidneys. We got to address the reoccurring infections. What the infection and the bacteria gives off is ammonium. And ammonium can build up and make a stone. And then finally, cysteine, this is going to be more of a genetic one where your body's inability to handle this amino acid inside the kidney. Probably not too many of you dealing with that. It's more of a genetic condition. However, the tips here will help a person in any of these four scenarios. Test first if you really want to know. Before you go cutting out a bunch of healthy foods in your diet, like berries and spinach and all these things for oxalates, why don't you take a look at what are you actually dealing with? Which of these four? Here's three simple tests that you could do, potentially. First two are the most important. Number one, check the urine. They can do this for you and they can look for, maybe there's uric acid in the urine. Well, then you know you're dealing with number two. Or maybe there could be oxalates in there. That's not a guarantee that you're having you know, a massive problem with oxalates. Or the ammonium. And then you know if you have this reoccurring UTI struvite type stone. So easy ones to test right there to be able to show you what's ending up in your urine, the closest to your kidneys, the closest to having these stones. Number two, check your blood levels. If you're concerned that you have previously had kidney stone issues, a family member has, you don't ever want to go through that pain again, have them test your serum blood oxalate levels. This is going to give you insight on how is your body processing oxalates. If there's not a problem there and those aren't high, you don't have an oxalate problem. You have one of the many other problems we have going on. It's just that oxalates and calcium are the issue. Just because calcium makes up a stone does not mean we should stop eating calcium. Your heart would stop. Okay. In fact, they actually say you need to increase calcium a little bit. Just because oxalates are involved with calcium, your body and a lot of foods produce oxalates. Your liver makes them. So maybe it's more of an issue of your liver being bogged down and you being able, not being able to process these as opposed to the nutrients themselves. So that's what we really want to look at. That'll give you an idea of what you're dealing with. How do we prevent these things? Here's some key big steps. Hydration is going to be by far the number one cause of this. You got to drink, but you got to absorb. A lot of times water isn't enough. I'm going to get you another video on that in just a moment and show you how to do it. Weight. If your weight is high, you're asking for these because you're probably eating too many carbohydrates, too many sugars, and too much toxic meat. That's a big culprit. These two would knock out a lot of kidney stone issues. Now let's keep moving on. The sugars and the carbs are going to add to the weight. The sugars and the carbohydrates, especially fructose, are going to decrease the absorption of magnesium and calcium uh, inside of the system. That's going to be a massive problem because that's what's stopping a lot of stones and improper imbalances in these nutrients in your body in the first place. So sugars and carbs block those minerals. I'm going to show you how to undo it. Soy, got to go. Beer, not a good idea if you're worried about kidney stones. Doesn't mean you can never have these things, but they better be non uh, genetically modified and potentially gluten-free, a uh, healthier form if you're going to have these. Table salt needs to go down, but we don't want to cut salt, all, salt out altogether. Magnesium and these minerals, those are salts. So we still need real salt, sea salt, Himalayan salt, 
those types of things, not just uh, table salt, okay? Blood pressure, if you got an issue there, address that first. Biggest problem with kidneys caused by the blood pressure. Blood pressure drives a lot of kidney issues. Fruits and veggies gotta go up. We need to get potassium from a healthy form up and then no over-the-counter pain medications. Ibuprofen, aspirins, these wreak havoc, especially if you mix them with alcohol, they're really hard on the kidney. You are asking for stones. These are major, major preventative lifestyle things. I know they're not as sexy as some little thing I could give you right now and never have a kidney stone again, but this is what's doing it way more often than some of the other culprits. Now, what can you take to help prevent? Vitamin B6 is very crucial to help supporting the kidneys, to flushing these out. 50 milligrams of that a day would be the recommendation, B6. Uh, magnesium, up to 400 milligrams of magnesium a day. Magnesium is gonna directly prevent stone formation inside the body. Even if you're eating oxalates, magnesium is gonna protect that from you along with potassium. Get your recommended daily allowance of potassium. That's 4,100, by the way, that you need to get to. Um, you can get this through fruits and vegetables, through juicing. Uh, we'll give you a lot of through taking sea salts or an electrolyte powder, like the one I have linked below. That's how I get my magnesium in and my potassium in on a daily basis. If you do have kidney issues, you probably are gonna be recommended not to overdo the potassium, but if you don't have a known kidney issue and you're just worried about kidney stones, I would increase potassium. Your ancestors ate way more of it. We get a lot more processed sodium now in our packaged foods and way less potassium. We wanna flip that on its head. Way less packaged foods, way more fruits, vegetables, and juicing. I like to use green juice to get that in. Finally, taurine. Taurine really helps with the system by blocking oxalate absorption. It also helps you produce the normal amount of bile in your liver that is creating these oxalates to help that whole system detox the way it's supposed to. Taurine needs to go in. Now here's what's cool. My electrolyte powder actually has the magnesium, potassium, and the taurine all already included. So you can check that out below. That's what I use on a daily basis to keep my minerals in the system. It also is supporting the kidneys. This is the preventative steps, how you're eating, your lifestyle, avoid these things. Get these nutrients in on a regular basis. If you're really concerned about oxalates or if you've had a stone in the past, do some testing to figure it out. Now, what if you're in the middle one right now? What do we do? Flip it around, Dr. Living Good. Okay, so what we're looking at here and what we wanna to try to figure out is um, what can we be putting in the body naturally that's gonna get ahead of this thing, break the stone down, how can we help? Apple cider vinegar, high amounts of acetic acid. I'd be taking this two tablespoons in the morning, two at night, in the middle of the stone to help loosen it, break it down. The acetic acid is very good at doing that, as well as lemon water. Lemon water is a good preventer, and while in the middle of it, it's very good for your liver. It's gonna help out the bile production. It's got a lot of nutrients in it, and the acids of it, which actually turn into alkaline in the body, help to break down and stop the absorption of these oxalates and the formation of these stones, helps the body get rid of them as well. Number three, the candida cleanse. Candida builds up in the lining of your digestive tract. A lot of times we don't know it unless we see our tongue becoming white or we have unexplained weight gain. Candida and yeast, yeast should be in the digestive tract, but when it overtakes it, it is now going to create problems with the oxalates that build up in our body, the absorption of those, the processing of those. And so we actually can track it back to candida breaking down the entire digestive tract all the way down to the urinary tract. And this buildup of yeast can create a lot of female problems, um, UTIs, as well as mess with the oxalate. So we gotta address underlying candida in your body. I would recommend if you're unsure, if you have an issue with it, go through one round of a candida cleanse. Uh, the one I use is called a microbe cleanse because it not only addresses candida, but also other parasites and other microbes that might build up in your gut that shouldn't be there that are really messing up the physiology of your body. Next, the foods. In the middle of a stone, or if you're having an attack on it, you wanna increase the amount of calcium foods that you're eating. Notice I didn't say calcium supplement. Avoid heavy supplement with calcium. You're gonna trade off to other side effects like hardening your arteries if you're taking too much of that. You can get it really good from food. Raw cheese is an excellent source. Broccoli, beans, kale. Uh, these are excellent, or my favorite, calcium food sources. You can be eating a lot of those on a daily basis and get plenty of it into your system. Your system, you think about a cow, right? Just eats a lot of grass, has plenty of calcium, you have strong bones. Calcium is going to help to pair with the oxalates, not creating kidney stones in the body. Now, what can you be taking? Potassium, that's not vitamin K, that's potassium and magnesium. Uh, those two together been proven to be very effective against stones. Potassium and magnesium needs to go in your regimen right away to prevent it or in the middle of it. 85% reduction in recurrence 
by properly getting these minerals inside your system. You see how important that they are? Then we want to increase the liver function and the bio function. We want that flushing out. How can you do it? Stop eating carbs. Stop eating sugars if you're in the middle of a flare up. And then give your uh, liver and bile some support. You can use ox bile, which is, is uh, more of an animal form of a bile that you can get in and take in a supplement form. Bile salts, liver helpers. These are all in my GI support to help flush the liver out and to help support it. You can eat to help it by decreasing carbohydrates and sugar. And then finally, get taurine in in the middle of it because it's going to block that oxalate absorption and really help those stones go in the right direction. So there are some steps. I like these first two. You can implement them immediately. Work on doing a candida cleanse, adding the right foods in, and getting these minerals in. I put links below for them. The electrolyte powder really does have the taurine. It has the potassium and the magnesium. I think that's a must. I would consider doing the GI support and detoxing out your liver and potentially adding the GI support with a candida cleanse if you're in the middle of a kidney stone. If not, then see back to the front side in the beginning part of this video. Make sure you're living out these lifestyle factors. Hydration is the absolute number one. Hydration goes a lot further than water. Water is not sometimes the most important factor. I did a video on that, and I think it'd be the next best place for you to go to learn about how you can keep your body hydrated to prevent not only your kidneys shutting down, but fatigue and a lot of other issues. I put that video right here for you. Check out the resource.